Hi, my name's Hayden. This is Alison, and Alison's been really kind to give up some of her precious time to come up and talk to us about these beautiful creatures. What's going on in there, Al? So, we have eight ringtail lemurs here at the zoo, but they're all boys, Hayden. So all boys. All boys. A bachelor group. A bachelor group, which is an interesting group to have, but it's also something that happens very naturally in the wild too. So believe it or not, the girls are the bosses in the lemur world. So they're responsible for all of the group dynamics and they're in charge, but they only usually let the boys into the groups during their breeding season. And outside of that time, the boys have to band together so that they're safe from predators and yep. so that they can offer each other that protection. So how many is inside? So we have eight all together. Eight boys inside yeah. there. Now they do something very interesting when it is that mating season, don't they? With they do. With little tiny spurs on the inside <laughs> there. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, they have these little spurs and also scent glands next to those spurs as well. So lemurs communicate through scent. They use the sense of smell to communicate with each other within the group and also with other lemurs in the area too. So when it comes to the breeding season, we see a behavior called stink fighting, which sounds really gross, but what it means is that they rub their tail up against those glands and they do a little bit of a shimmy and they actually waft the tail towards each other. And it's a way that they can assert dominance and it's also a way that they show courtship behaviors towards the females as well. So the girls find that stink pretty attractive. Some of them do, yeah, okay, <laughs> depends on the male. What would they eat with us in Taronga versus what they would eat in the wild? So they're from the island of Madagascar, which is just off the continent of Africa. And so they're from the south. And down in the south, it's very arid. They come from an area called an open spiny forest. So the food availability down there is quite limited because the dry season is so long. When they are eating down there, they're eating different types of leaves, different roots and shoots of plants as well. If there are berries in season, they go nuts over those. And then they also tend to eat insects in the wild too, because they're very high in water content. And obviously being from an arid area, they need all the water that they can get from their food. So when it comes to our diet here at the zoo, we like to try and encourage as many of those natural nutrients that they'd be consuming in the wild too. So we give them lots of different browse. You can see the exhibits full of palm and lily pilly which they love to eat and then we also supplement with different fruit and veg which is all done by our nutritionist on site so she's amazing she's in the know and we cultivate a diet together that works for them throughout the year amazing yeah. thank you so much for it's just a it's little so snippet of Alison's time really really precious time that the keepers have at Taronga but keep your eyes on this we're going to keep you updated because you never know what's around the next corner we'll see you next time